Uh, greetings because of Jesus and his authority, by his name, because of him. I uh, like, really like that idea of we're here because of him and also rejoicing. There's people interested in following his teachings and doing his will and that I can fellowship with that because I don't know how buddy sometimes says we have this lofty idea. Well, I have this lofty idea that I think I have discernment about these things and I can understand these things, but why so few people can discern this? And then how can I trust that how can I trust that we we're doing this in the right spirit and we're doing it in the right in the right way, but um, but I just rejoice that I think there is some strength in having others, a lot of strength in others pursuing the same thing. Uh, there was a time in my life when I didn't know of any single other person that was pursuing it the way we're pursuing it now. Um, it's just the way it was. And I feel like God tested me and tried me to see if I would back off of that conviction. And I don't know how well I came through that, but I somehow I came through uh, so far. Well, if you all liked uh, Matthew 5, 6, and 7 so well, I guess I could just read it again. Um, I thought of reading 5, 6, and 7, and I decided I would only read 6. Tail still read it, so. Um, but, um, so we'll see what happens. I was thinking of, you know, uh, well, I like this impression that Tail tried to give us, and, and uh, I, I want, that is my desire that we can impress each other about the seriousness of Christ. And, and this is not a play. This is actually real. This is, his words are so, make such a difference that it's going to be like a house crashing and a house standing. That's the difference. If we're doers of his word, we may not even understand everything, but if we, if we press on his word, I trust that we'll stand. I, I feel like I've done that in my life, and I probably have to continue that way, pressing on into that kingdom because, um, and I don't understand everything. What happens if we do this? Or what happens if we don't do that? Do we want to try that? Or do we want to press into the kingdom even though we don't understand? And I think a lot of these things actually do make sense to us. Um, there's so many common things that just apply to, to our life. And I think, like I've often said, that I think these teachings of his reach right into eternity and fit in there as well. Though the old did not, it had to be, there had to be a new covenant. And it was there for a taskmaster, it says. It was there to bring them to Christ. It was there for many other things. It's for example of what happens when we disobey. And um, I, I, I know there's many more. And my thought was, um, I don't know if it's a subject, but time, what do we do with our time? When I looked up time, I think there's like 800 some in the Bible. And they all had to do with a moment, mostly had to do with a moment, like now, occasion. It's, it's, you can say lifetime, which means kind of what, a person exists, that's a lifetime, but uh, 
time was usually used as a very narrow time, uh, uh, just a moment. And that's the time we have. It's time for gathering here. It's time for a birth. There's time for death. And there's time for um, all kinds of things. So, so my challenge today is going to be what are we doing with our time? Our now. If we... We can use our time. We, God has, I think this is something that God has given us right now. He has given us time. It may not be this coming hour, but we have this time. It may not be tomorrow. So, as I was thinking about this, um, God always wants us to use our time in a in a good way, and with in our thoughts and in our in being careful and being being um, diligent and use wisdom and and many many other different ways that we can. God encourages us to use our time. Um, Um, the thought that uh, Daniel threw in about self-control. I don't think we can keep, I would just guess we couldn't keep any of his commandments without self-control. Um, that is certainly a part of, it means control. It, it means that we have self-control. We, we control. We're not slaves if we're slaves to sin, we're slaves to sin. But it, it, God doesn't want us slaves to these things. He wants us to be free. And I was thinking, something reminded me of um, um, well, I, I thought of this different times, but something reminded me of this that Eve, the danger of adding, like the Pharisees had added. I think when uh, Dwayne was talking about adding all their definitions to the Sabbath, definitions to um, 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 how far they can walk, and all they did, the tithe. And I've wondered already if Adam told Eve, don't touch that tree. You know, you, you, maybe if you touch that tree, you'll die. I, I don't know what he said for sure, but... When Satan came to her, he said, we're not supposed to touch that tree. That was not what God had said. And I wonder if when we add things, if they by, by nature, default, will cause us to stumble. It will put a burden on us that we can't bear. And the Pharisees, they, they were doing that same thing. And we know that, <clears throat> we know that today... We can very quickly be doing that same thing, adding burdens that are hard to bear. And we ourselves do the things we like to do, but we like to tell others what to do. And I wonder if there's just a downfall in that of when we start adding. Well, I know when we add in a certain way, I think it's very destructive. But like Eve, I, I had to think, well, was that good or was it bad? But something... Something about it seems to come out bad. And so, um, um, I think we need to be very careful about adding and taking away. It, the Bible's written in such a way that we feel almost compelled to put directions to it in many little ways. And I'm not sure if that's so that we... Uh, I'm, I guess I won't get into that. But...
there's so many places where we just add or take something away that's there. Um, sometimes I think it's, it's human error and it's, um, there's ways of figuring some of that stuff out, but um, so many times we, we feel like if we'd add something, it'd be so much better. Is it really? Can we actually add to what Jesus taught and, and, um, and it's going to come out okay? I don't think so. So I had been going to get into uh, Matthew 6. Um, but being that everything's red, so I, I guess I'll just really quickly go over um, like the feeling I've had, um, as you all probably been hearing. I just feel like the beginning is just such a, such a place for us to start. Like being poor in spirit. You know, if we're proud in spirit, are we going to get along? Are we going to seek truth? Are we... Um, I think we're just going to have to humble ourselves and uh, those that mourn. This, I think this is talking about the same spirit, like just, just being sad about... Um, just being sad about maybe our humanity or our, our, how poor we are or how many sins we've, we have and had and we mourn. And then if we're meek, we will inherit the earth. Somebody mentioned that. Anyway, I think this is a, a, a very good foundation for us to, to go on if we, if we can get the whole of that, we're going to get a whole of the rest of the scriptures too. If we miss this part, we're going to get in there some other way. If this is the door and we go in some other way, there's going to be lots of conflicts and lots of problems. I just think it's noteworthy. Um, and like Jesus' teachings often are, there's so clear... So, um, easy to understand. Um, and then he, he starts in with not, not trying to have a name or try to have our piety practiced before others and give our alms so that others can see that we're, we're really helping people and we're, we're, um, we're trying to sh show that off and praying the same way, talking about the same spirit and fasting, I thought, somewhere in here with the same spirit. This is a real trap for most humans. Um, he is wanting the honor of man and um, and just just somehow being recognized. I'm something. Am I not? Don't I? Am I not really? Isn't God really blessed because of me? Aren't the people real glad to see me? Am I not pretty important? This is something that man really portrays and in very subtle ways. In the Pharisees, uh, a lot of that was, I think, was because they, they wanted that honor and they wanted, and they're not the only ones, but it was something they really practiced. So we have these clear, clear instructions not to store up treasures. Um, 
I would like to bring this time and, and some of these things together. Like we spend our time, what? Storing up treasures on earth? You know, there's a way, we, we, it's right clear here how we store treasures in heaven. And we might get concerned that our car might get broken in. We might get concerned our money's going to get taken from us. We might think the country is going to go broke one of these days and the banks are going to be worthless. Where's our treasure? If our treasure's in heaven, will it matter? If the countries fall apart, if man puts us down, if, if we have no honor, if we have treasure in heaven, then we're even killed for his sake. We can go to where our treasure is. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust corrupts and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So when we keep Jesus' teachings, and we walk in his love, we walk in his commandment, we walk in his power, we walk in his authority, this is putting treasure in heaven. And I think one plainly says, if we give money to the poor, is storing up treasure in heaven. If I'm not mistaken. But I believe all his teachings are storing treasure in heaven. And then he just simply says, well, where our hearts are, there's, there's or where our treasures, that's where our heart is. That's what, that's what we think and worry about. So what, is, what has this got to do with our time? Our time is now. The things that we do now, today, are are what makes the difference. We we can now, today, this moment, we take a hold of these words and we we do them. This is what makes the difference whether we're built on the rock. This is the difference whether we have treasure in heaven. The eye is the lamp of the, lamp of the body, so if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? And the reminder, we cannot serve two masters. So there again, this time... Are we using, um, okay, so we got many, many different choices today that in the past history has not been quite that, there have not been that many as we have today. Um, if you want to, wanted to go somewhere, you walk. Or maybe a horse, perhaps, in a wagon, or a ride. But quite often, walking was pretty popular. Today, we've got to figure out how to get, have gas, how to have insurance, how to have this, how to have that. Um, it gets very complicated. And we can get caught up in this. So all these things that we have tend to get us caught up and, and if, we're, if we're doing things for... I think we can use all these things today that we have for good. Uh, we can travel to another country in a matter of hours, whereas it would have taken maybe a year. Maybe not even make it. Some people still don't make it today, but uh, it was more dangerous. It was very difficult. It was very difficult to go from one state to another, and much more difficult to go from one end of the country to the other. That was a long, hard journey. 
But if it's for the Lord, so be it. That's okay. So my encouragement would be, like, with, with our families, with the things we touch every day, the things we have, um, that we use these things carefully and diligently and with wisdom and, and with thought. There's also things like people. Most people spend time with people, used to at least. Maybe with these modern things, it's become less, but um, we can spend time with our families. We can spend time with families. We can spend time with our spouses, with our children, with our brothers and sisters, and our, our spiritual brothers and sisters, our neighbors. Again, are we wisely using our time with, with these things? Are we, do we think about this? I think, I think we need to think. There's, there's consider. God said, uh, come reason with me. I forget who he told that to, but there's an Old Testament somewhere. He was telling, t- saying it to Isaiah. Yeah. Or the, or the people. Anyways, he, reasoning is, is thinking, is taking thought back and forth. He, um, in some ways, reasoned with Job or tried to, but Job backed off really quickly. He was not very smart. He realized he's not very smart. He's not very gifted. He's not very, he had nothing. And he covered his mouth. I will not speak anymore. This is, the, this is what we need before God too. We will not, when we hear Jesus' teachings that why I take a why add or take away from it? If God holds us to these things, He's going to hold us to these things, and we we can encourage one another to be serious about them, using our time to do the, to do those kind of things. Um, I know we all have our thoughts. I'm not sure how many. Sometimes I have these thoughts when I'm somewhere else. Some some thoughts. Oh, this is really, really something. And then I should write it down immediately, and I don't. So I forget some of these thoughts. Of um, some people call it uh, quality time with children. Um, you know the the time we spend. If our phones are competing, making us, comp- there's a competition for time. Uh, let's let's think about that. There's even one person I think we should have more time than for one person, but uh, I guess here's where the blessed and the beauty of oneness comes together. We're one. We can together use our time together for others. We don't have to like, I don't have to spend all my time for one person. Or like a husband and wife. They're one. And they don't have to spend all the time for themselves. They can actually together spend their time for others. I think we have that same ability as, as a brotherhood, as brothers and sisters. We can somehow blend this time that we have and we, can, we don't waste it on each other. We're together using it for others. And families can do that as well. Anybody can do it. Let's use our time where it's most profitable. And, and that's why I picked Matthew 6, finally. Uh, not just 6, I have 
5, 6, and 7. This is, these, are the, these, are the, these are the living words from the Father. And Jesus said, he, he, he said everything came from the Father. And he came here to do his will, to show us a way. And I believe he kept these things. He, he, was, he, was, he was willing to humble himself and become a servant. He came from heaven, but he humbled himself and became a servant. He served. He used his time. He only used kind of three years of his time in a strong way. And those three years of doing the will of the Father. I don't think he was not doing the will of the Father before that or after. But in that time, well, I guess what I'm trying to say is we don't have to have much time. We don't have to have 90 years. Um, <laughs> that thief on the cross, how much time did he have? It was a very short time. From the time he humbled himself that we know of him was maybe a few hours. And we still speak about him. His time was not wasted. Our time is never, <clears throat> never wasted when we use it for God. And in keeping in keeping these things, I somehow there is a danger of I th I think there's a danger of being legalistic about his, Jesus' teachings, and they become cruel and hard. They become divisive, but in our heart we think. We're in track. I think these things are possible. I'm not able to explain that fully right now. And anybody can explain or have a topic on it sometime. Um, I'd be glad to. I'm one of, one of those people that likes, I like to know how things work. And um, maybe everybody does, I don't know. But I always wonder why people do what they do and why why I perhaps do what I do or what safeties we can have, how we can pursue this, this light. I think the simplicity of it is that when we do what Jesus says, we will stand the storms. We may not even understand what storms are coming, but they will weather us through because they are built, they, that is building on the rock and it will stand. So when we use our time wisely, with thought and with carefulness, diligent, with wisdom, discernment, self-control, use our thoughts, taking every thought captive. That might be a challenge for us to think about. How often do we let our thoughts wander off and we don't take them captive? And then they're off wandering in places where they shouldn't be and then there's sin. And I, don't, I can't remember if it's Jesus or the apostles, but um, in the New Testament it says that we need to take every thought captive. Again, there's probably this, we could say, well, I could challenge everybody. Have we been taking every thought captive this morning? None of us probably have 100%. Um, but there's, there's, there's something about a direction a man takes that will, will end up being his destiny.
And if a man purposes in his heart to follow God, I, I think there's safety. And this is where my joy comes in of being here together and that we can challenge one another in these ways. And I, I don't really have anything new to share to anybody, really. I just, um, we all we all knew we all knew everything I said. So it's, but I don't know. The men and I ministers used to say we're forgetful hearers, and we forget, and so we go through our life, and things come up, and we kind of forget, and then we get upset, and then we think we need this or we need that, and and we worry about. The future, and we worry. Some people worry about the past. Um, these are not good things to worry about. Jesus, so let us not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. So. I thank God that we can live now, live the time here. And when I think of, I sometimes have to remind myself and maybe others that um, can we can we handle right now, or can we? Is it so terrible right now that we can't uh, do the right thing, make the right choice? For this minute, and well, yeah, we can we can make this minute, and well, if if we continue walking in that light in that way, pretty soon our whole life is gone. And uh, praise be to God if it was toward the light. So let's make let's take thought of our time. It's just another emphasis, I guess, like take thought of what we think, take thought of other people, take thought of God's will, take thought of, you know, there's many things we could go on, but um, we have this time, and uh, that's my thought for now. So God bless you, and feel free to share. Amen. Thank you, brother. I, there's a number of places in the Bible where it speaks about a double witness, and the double witness was a confirmation. Um, I think on Monday, no, probably Tuesday, I started, I started trying to gather my thoughts on what I was going to share. And um, I started out for a few days working on the uh, subject of time. So I find that really interesting that you... You wanted to share that. That's what you shared. And, and then I just, it was going to be too much, or I, I just, I don't know, I'm not sure, but I just ended up putting it to the side, and I didn't want to worry about it. I didn't want to, sometimes I kind of get, um, I want to have something nice to share, but at the same time I can get over overwhelmed with, with it too. And so I just set it to the side, and then I, I didn't have anything up until last night, and I just, I said, I'm not even going to worry about it. I thought actually what I would do is just come here with nothing and see what happened because I always, I always just really admired people that can do that. I thought I'd just put myself into that awkward situation and see what happened. But this morning I woke up and, and I felt led to share that other thing. But anyways, two, a few things that I, that I did come across about time is, <clears throat> uh, well, there's that scripture, redeeming the time for the days are evil. Like there is, It is something that we can redeem um, it's really important that we do redeem it, like you said. And and another thing about time is is there's there's a right time and there's a wrong time to do something. And in relation to that, I, I think of the scripture today. If you have heard his voice, harden not your hearts. Like today is the day of salvation. It's today. It's not tomorrow. It's it's not yesterday. It's today. What we do with today. It's really important. And <clears throat> one more thing, too, is a, is a quote. It's a really popular quote. Maybe you've heard it before, but it's, if I could share one thing with the children in this room, 
that that if you could just lay hold of this quote, even the young men and the young women, uh, and really lay it to heart and just think about it and ponder about it, and uh, it could really help you in the future. But the quote is, um, procrastination is the thief of time. So if you can just consider that, you know, what you're laying your hands to, what you're doing with your time, if you're just wasting it or you're pra procrastinating, you're just, you know, I'll see that, like, sometimes I'll see my children, they just, it's time to do the dishes, and they just want to do everything but the dishes, and I try to tell them, if you would just do the dishes, it's easier than sitting around wasting your time worrying about having to do the dishes. But anyways, I, I really appreciated the, what you shared. God bless you. Yeah, Brother Teo beat me to it. So it's Ephesians 5, verse 8. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And like Teo pointed out, I think, I think it's been... I think it's clear. It should be clear. <laughs> and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore he says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days of evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Amen, Brother Walter. Time, <clears throat> time, tiempo, tiempo. Uh, why don't we just get all up, like you say, about worry, worry and worrying. I heard this said 30 Maybe 40 years ago, Church of Christ, I don't know. Yeah, close to 40 years ago. Let's get all our bills, you know, the bills or payments. Just put them on a table at nighttime and just sit over them and stand and just sweat over them and just worry them and worry and see if, see if they go away in the morning, you know. We just <laughs> lose some sleep and just worry over them and see, see if they disappear. When we could uh, trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not on our own understanding, and in the prayer group this morning, I said to Brother Tyler, as he's always, it's maybe the last time I see you, brethren, you know, Canada's going down the tubes, Canada's all this, the provinces, the, he can do exceedingly abundantly more than we ask or think. And so we'll, we'll see you soon, brother. You'll be part of this group down here permanently. Just a matter of time, if we, the Lord's will, we believe it. And another thing, Brother Walter, you know, you, or and Teo, you use the, uh, Sermon on the Mount from Matthew 5, 6, and 7. In the Sermon on the Plain, be technical, right? In Luke 6, it says, When men uh, shall persecute you and say, revile you and speak, say all evil things about you, then subir con gozo. Leap with joy. Leap with joy. You're holding up a sign in Springfield, and they knock the sign down, and they spit on us. So when we go home, we can leap for joy. We're doing as well. We're doing His will, and we pray for those people too. But we can leap for joy, and we should leap for joy that we have uh, um, we're trying to follow in the footsteps of the Lord. They persecuted Him; they're going to get us too. The Lord be magnified. Therefore, the redeemed of the Lord shall return.
Oh, oh, oh.